ever find yourself lost on social media, wondering, what have I been doing for the last few hours? On this episode, let's talk about social media. I'll dive into the evolution of social media from the days of just message boards to MySpace, all the way up until the viral videos from TikTok. Stay tuned. Today, the number one goal of most social platforms is to keep you on the site by any means necessary. So today, video is the most powerful tool for keeping everybody's attention. Cheers. It's a scary new trend. Cheers, boys. Don't, uh-uh-uh, them shoes is too big for this situation. <laughs> they too big. When you start to shake, you know it's gonna break. Oh! There's a rumor that some kid posted a, a picture of a gun on Instagram. But he before said, all the viral videos, we had message boards. In the very beginning, it started with the BBS, short for Bulletin Board Systems. These online meeting places were effectively independently produced chunks of code that allowed users to communicate with the central system where they could download files, games, and even share pirated software, and also send messages back and forth. Access over telephone lines via modem, BBSers were often run by hobbyists. Then CompuServe came along to allow members to share files and access news events. But it also offered something few had ever experienced, true interaction. Not only could you send a message to your friend via this new thing that we now call email, you've got mail. You could also join any of CompuServe's thousands of discussion forums to chat with thousands of other members on virtually any important subject of the day and pave the way for what we now know as social media. So you see, early on, the need to share files and communicate was the center of early versions of the social platforms in the 80s. During the 90s, a few different sites and platforms gained popularity. Along with the rise of America Online, giving millions the ability to access the internet with just a dial-up connection, the world's largest computer service, America Online, went down yesterday for 19 hours, taking with it millions of subscribers who were suddenly cut off from their information wonderland. Six million people were taken offline. An electronic community of six million people were blacked out. You couldn't have electronic chat sessions online, and you couldn't get instant news and stock quotes. If you were born after 1990, you might not know the struggle of just getting on the internet. The excitement of receiving an AOL disc in the mail. It was the thing back then. You've got mail. They made the internet easier than ever. ever. It's fast. If you have a phone line, you can go online. What will they think of next? America Online, so easy to use, no wonder. So back to the video. There was classmates.com and sixdegrees.com. These were the main two competing platforms at that time. Classmates.com was founded on November 17, 1995, according to Wikipedia, by Randy Conrads as Classmates Online, Inc., it originally sought to help users find class members and colleagues. SixDegrees.com is a social network service website that initially lasted from 97 to 2000 and was based on the web of contacts model of social networking. It was named after the six degrees of separation concept and allowed users to list friends, family members, and acquaintances, both on the site and externally. Users could send messages and post bulletin board items to people in their first, second, and third degrees and see their connections to any other users on the site. Six Degrees was one of the first social networking sites of the general form that is in widespread use today. It was followed by more successful social networking sites based on the social circles network model, such as Friendster, MySpace, LinkedIn, Zing, and Facebook. 2002 was a huge year for social media. I think it was the year that gave birth to what we consider modern day social media with the launches of websites like Friendster, LinkedIn, and MySpace. For a short few years, MySpace and Friendster battled it out for the number one spot, while LinkedIn just targeted more professional crowd. If you want a more in-depth look at the story of MySpace, check out the podcast Business Movers. There's a five-part series titled Fighting for MySpace. Also, check out the previous video I did on the story of Friendster. Link above. Some of the main takeaways from the article point out that one, Friendster killed off anyone who didn't conform to their standard. While the early adopters left Storm-like, canceling their accounts, most users simply stopped logging in frequently. The slow servers made it very difficult, if not impossible, for mainstream users to engage. Where Friendster dropped the ball, MySpace picked it up and ran with it. 
When MySpace users didn't conform, they were supported and recognized for their contributions to evolving the system. When Friendster was faltering because it was uncool, Friendster users did not stick up for the site. When MySpace began to falter over the predator crisis, many users got outraged at those attacking the system. They wrote supportive notes to Tom, made YouTube videos, wrote messages on their MySpaces, and you might remember if you had a profile on MySpace, as soon as you logged into MySpace, Tom was the first friend. MySpace stayed out of the news for the first few years of his existence online and became the cool place to be. Growing organically, MySpace was seen as the place to go for bands, comedians, actors, rappers, singers. MySpace was starting to attract celebrities during this time. The first main celebrity that switched to myspace with tia tequila myspace had a music feature also allowing users to play their favorite songs anytime people visited their page along with the top friends feature that was stolen from friendster myspace felt more inviting and a cool place to hang out and meet new people another thing that myspace had over friendster i think was that you could add celebrities to your friends list or you could befriend celebrities and have the illusion of talking directly to celebrities while on the platform. But as fast as MySpace rose to the top of the social media mountain, it started to decline with the public seeing it as a place for crime, sex traffickers, and pedophiles. I didn't know my daughter was on MySpace. He says his 13-year-old daughter was posing on MySpace as an 18-year-old. He says that's when 28-year-old George Hanna sent him an instant message. Uh, it's in the other room. Here, you just hang out here for a sec. Um, let me grab something. If you ever watched the show To Catch a Predator, you would always see the old dude um, getting caught up with some 13-year-old. Well, most people saw MySpace as the place where this interaction would begin. And there were even claims that people were getting bullied. When a boy calling himself Josh Evans on the popular social networking site MySpace suddenly turned mean and insulting. Towards the end, MySpace was really kind of catching a lot of blowback from the public. 2004, Facebook was launched, now known as Meta, and two years after that, Twitter launched with a more basic approach, allowing users to tweet short messages using more of a newsfeed style message board. Twitter became the place to go for news, live updates for what's happening on the ground during worldly events, and all the way up until now, some news stations, real news stations, use Twitter to as to report what's on TV. The one thing that I think has completely changed social media is the invention of smartphones. The fact that every phone has a camera has completely changed the game. And in the mid 2000s, we see sites like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, they all start adopting video and pictures. And that's what's changed everything. So from the mid 2000s till today, it's all about video and capturing attention. So what's the future for social media? Right now we have the metaverse, we have Decentraland, uh, we have all these virtual worlds, Web 3.0, who knows where it goes from here. But what I can tell you is the future is bright, anything's possible, the metaverse is seeming to be something on the rise, people are buying land inside the metaverse for millions of dollars hundreds of thousands people are creating nfts i'm excited to see how social media goes from just message boards sending pictures and videos all the way into the metaverse thanks for watching don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button in the description below i have all the links to all my software camera gear and tools that i use to make my youtube videos also there's a link to previous videos if you want to find out more about Friendster and stay tuned for more videos.